Hi guys, Franzo here for Peel3D. Um, so today I have a special project that I want to show you. I have this uh, Christmas ornament that's actually been in my family for a while now. Um, my parents really like it, but unfortunately it, it broke over the years and uh, they couldn't find the missing limb. And so my dad asked me if, it, if I could try to scan it, uh, duplicate the missing part and, and basically fix the thing. And so this is what we're going to do today. We're going to scan this ornament using a GoScan 20 and uh, see if we can reproduce the missing limb using VX model. So of course I don't see this as uh, a, quite a common application, but I still think it's interesting for you guys to see how it's done and what can be done with the software itself. So enjoy this video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is to capture the shape of our ornament. And so I've placed it on the table. Uh, this is our regular turntable. Now I've put our little turtles all around. So these are support uh, for targets at an angle. So it really helps uh, when you're doing grazing angle and capturing your, your, your object at different angles. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to digitize this scan in uh, different positions and then I'm going to show you how to merge these different scans uh, directly into uh, the X elements. I'm going to flip my part onto my turntable. I'm going to hide the scan and then I'm going to scan again. Scanning in a different position like that allows me to see other areas of the object that were difficult to see in the previous position. And so I'm just going to collect all the data like this. So we are going to speed things up though. And once I have all my session captured, I'm going to show you how to merge them afterwards. Okay, so we have um, finally captured all three scans and now I'm going to show you how we're going to uh, align them and merge them. So we're going to go into merge here and uh, we are going to use the um, best fit uh, merge with manual alignment. And so what we're going to do is roughly put them in similar position and select approximate three matching points, as I'm doing here. Now I'm just going to press best fit here. And we're going to do the same with the second scan here. So again, I'm just going to hide this for a second. Just put them into similar positions. Select matching points. And again, this doesn't have to be exact. It just, have, just has to be roughly in the same place and then the best fit is going to do uh, the magic and here we go all of our three scans are aligned and now we can also do uh, a global registration and we're just going to press merge here using the same resolution of 0.3 millimeter show the model itself so we have all three scans merged together and uh, although this is not perfect I could add some additional data here and there but um, this is going to be good enough for uh, what we want to do today so we're, now we're going to move on to uh, the post treatment step Okay, so we have our scan here, and so the first thing we're going to do is to clean it, align it, and make it watertight. And to do so, we're going to go to VX model. So we're going to create a mesh here. Now I'm just going to hide the texture because it's not going to matter into our project. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the clean mesh here. Uh, this is an automatic function. It's going to scan our part and find you know, all these uh, tiny details that uh, don't work and fix them automatically. There we 
go. Now we're going to align it automatically. There you go. I'm just going to hide the original mesh here. There you go. All right, so our file is already cleaned and aligned. Now I'm just going to get rid of all these little spikes there, here and there. Uh, so we're going to run the remove spike function. more and more aggressive. Go up to, to run it up to all the way up to 95. There we go. This is already looking pretty good. And now we are missing some areas and we are going to make this file watertight. There we go. And here we go. So we now have watertight model of our ballerina complete and aligned and so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we are going to use the existing hand in order to recreate the missing part here and now our next step is going to be to use that existing hand here and duplicate it and create the missing part here. And so in order to do that, I'm going to duplicate here, this mesh. I'm going to rename this one. And this one will be the hand. And so what I'm going to do now is just to show that model hand here. I'm going to use reform selection, select through, and basically isolate the hand part here. So I selected it, selected through to reverse selection. I'm going to delete it. So now I have a hand, but it's still a left hand. So I'm going to turn it into a right hand using the mirror function here to draw a line, draw a plane, there we go, now I don't need that one anymore, and now I have my mirrored hand, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to align it to my model, doing a best fit. To roughly align it manually so this is the exact same thing as when I was merging scans together uh, I'm just going to use Now you see my hand is roughly at the right place, but still not perfect. So you see how it looks. Now I'm just going to fine tune my alignment. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original severed uh, wrist surface and I'm going to merge that surface with this new uh, handpiece that I just created. Next thing I want to do is to cut the excess surface here, uh, something that we don't want, and create the exact uh, missing piece uh, in order to complete our ornament. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide the hand but keep it selected and you see I'm going to rely on the actual surface of the severed wrist here just like that now I'm going to take my rectangle no I'm just going to use the freeform selection tool and I'm going to so you see 
Now I just selected, I actually selected a uh, surface of my hand, uh, but with it being hidden. So you see, selected this area of the hand here, and I'm going to delete that surface. There we go. And now, um, she's going to isolate that surface here. There we go, control I, delete. And so, what I'm going to want to do next is to merge that hand surface here with the remaining part of that wrist here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to select my ballerina surface here. And uh, as funny as it may sound, this entire surface I don't need. The only thing I'm inter interested in is the uh, wrist area here. So I'm going to do a selection. I'm going to use the freeform again. And uh, I'm going to delete that entire surface. I'm going to do a boundary selection here and I'm going to extend my selection up to my surface. Now this is a little uneven so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to use the brush selection here. So what I'm really doing is isolating the what's going to be my mating surface. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is to inverse flip the normal on that surface here. Because it was an external surface, now it becomes an internal surface. There we go. So now I have my missing piece here, and I have my meeting surface. And now I'm going to join them together. So I'm going to combine them. So this is going to turn them into a single surface but now they're still disjointed so I'm going to use the whole filler I'm going to start by creating a bridge here so bridge it here there we go now I'm just going to fill this that okay Now we're just going to see if it fits with our ballerina. Okay, so things are now looking looking pretty good. And uh, what's actually interesting is since our hand here and the wrist share the same uh, surface, they're perfectly aligned. And uh, last thing we can actually do is use some functions in VX model in order to improve our surface here. So we could do a little improvement using the sculpt function. So I'm going to go very mildly, but we could do things like basically correct any deviation or hole or bump into our surface. We can also use the sandpaper here very mild very low strength and just sand it a little there you go just to make that as clean as possible can't sand any tiny thing we don't like and so yeah this is looking now pretty good and uh, we could use these uh, same tools in order to sand our wrist area here if we wanted to, but things are looking pretty good. 
And now if I just show you the isolated hand, there you go. It's looking pretty awesome. So what I'm going to do now is to send it to my resin 3D printer, have it printed and see how it fits on the actual model. All right, so all done printing here. I have the part with me and I don't know if you can see this, but this is actually looking pretty good. This thing has a lot of details and it's looking fantastic. So it just finished curing with my 3D printer. And now we're just going to see. So I don't know if you can see it. No, it actually doesn't see it well enough. I don't know if you can see it, but it actually fits perfectly right there. So I'm just now going to put a coat of primer paint, going to glue it into place and uh, do a uh, match paint with some acrylic paint and show you the final result. And there we go, our part is fixed. Uh, things are looking great. Uh, the ghost can worked perfectly. Uh, the part turned out highly detailed. I'm really happy about it. And I know my parents are going to be pretty happy about it too. I uh, want to thank you for watching this video and as a token of my appreciation, I'll put in the comments below a link to download the uh, entire ornament if you want to print it at home. Uh, so wish you some happy holidays and uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.